Hey everyone, I'm Chris Anderson. And I'm District Chief Matt Flagler from the Cincinnati Fire Department. And today we're going to teach you about the chemistry of fire. So Chief, what's the chemistry behind a fire? So the chemistry of a fire is a reaction called oxidation. Uh, oxidation is the same reaction that makes metal rust. However, in a fire, that reaction happens very, very quickly. Uh, the principal elements for a chemical reaction of fire are something called a hydrocarbon, which is, we talked about that carbon and hydrogen together. Um, probably the most classic one would be methane, which is the natural gas that heats most of our homes. Um, we combine that with oxygen and a rapid reaction occurs. And the output of that reaction is carbon dioxide and water. And heat, right? And Well, and heat, <laughs> because the reaction happens so quickly, uh, the oxygen and the hydrocarbon have a very high amount of energy inside those molecules. And when I have the chemical reaction, I reduce those, that energy level to a much lower state. So to get from this high energy level to this lower level, I have to give off energy, and it happens in two ways. First is heat, like you said, because the molecules are crashing into each other so fast. And second is light. It's so fast that we see the light of the flame of the fire. Now you have a demo to kind of show us how that reaction works, right? Correct. All right, you ready to show us? I am. All right, me too. Well, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Chief, uh, tell us a little bit about the demo. So what we're going to look at is something called volatility, and volatility relates to vapors that come off of a flammable liquid. Um, in this case, we're using diesel fuel, and in a minute we'll put some fire to it, and we'll see that we really, even with flame, can't get diesel fuel to light on fire. That's because it actually has a pretty low volatility level. Okay. In, in the fire department, we call that something that's combustible. It will burn, but it doesn't burn very fast. So to help us along in our demo, we're going to use a liquid called a heptane that's got a much higher amount of volatility, or for us, what we call a lower flash point, which means that at a lower temperature, it lets off vapors. And that very small amount of that volatile liquid will heat up the remaining diesel fuel, and we'll see a really big fire. Uh, anything else we want to we need to know before we get this guy lit? Once we uh, get it lit, we're going to put it out. Okay. Uh, in fact, you're going to put it out. And the way that we uh, might put out a fire is we can remove the fuel, we could turn off a valve, we could pull the burning material away so it doesn't, the fire doesn't spread. We can restrict the amount of air that flows into it. We might put a pan over, or a lid over the pan that's on fire. Okay. Or we can remove the heat. And by that, we can pour water on it. Um, we can do all kinds of things that might lower the temperature. And then when we want to finish this job, we will use the big hose line off of the engine. And that hose line actually has firefighting foam in it. And so the water in the hose line is going to reduce that temperature. Okay. And the foam in there actually floats over top of this hydrocarbon fuel and it shuts off the air. So we have kind of a combination mode of putting out Cutting the off fire. the oxygen. Yes. Gotcha. Well, we're ready to light it up? Yes. Let's light it up. All right. That went up quick. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I mean, the, all we had to do is that little bit of flame and all those gases just went up like that. That's right, and they're going to heat each other as that fire grows. Right. It creates the heat that the reaction needs to continue. That chain, rea that chain reaction keeps that combustion going. That's correct. That's cool. So, I mean, it's, it's super hot here, and we're at least 30 yards away. If a fire breaks out in your house, what are some things that we should do to make sure that we're safe? Well, the number one thing we want everybody to do is have a smoke detector. Uh, the smoke detector gives you just so much early warning. The smallest amount of smoke from that fire is going to alert you that there, there's a problem. So well before this kind of rate of heat release is yeah. on us, you're going to be safe and you're going to be able to escape. Uh, the other things to do is when you have a small fire in the home is we want to make sure that um, 
you separate yourself from that fire. So if you're exiting, you close the door. If you live in an apartment building, always close that door on your way out. That'll cut off some of the oxygen. That's correct, and it'll keep that fire from spreading. Gotcha. Um, I'm sure having a fire extinguisher around the house to, to stop that reaction from continuing is probably really helpful too. Yes, the fire extinguishers can be really helpful, but we always want to make sure that we have a little bit of practice, we know how to use them, and the most important thing is the safety of everybody in their home. And yeah. so if there's any concern, go outside and call the fire department. That's what we're here for. That's right. Well, Chief, thanks so much for bringing me down here, teaching me how fires work, and teach us some fire safety. That's great. I'm glad to have you. Hey, thanks a lot. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Science Around Sensi. Do you love science? Of course you do. So stay up to date on all things science around Scentsy by subscribing to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sci Around Scentsy.